Hi, it's Miriam, and I'm going to teach you how to do a farapu. So first, it's the standing. That is your foundation of farapu. So you want to make sure that you choose how to stand. There's two schools of Tahitian. There's the ancient form where your toes are slightly out, which is how I teach it and how I'm going to teach it today. But you choose your <laughs> your own way, like whatever works best for you. The other school of Tahitian is to have your toes completely straightforward. Okay, just like this. So my are just slightly out, slightly, not super open, right? And I'm going to tell you why is the reason behind this, right? Um, I am a yoga instructor. I am a hula dancer. I'm a Tahitian dancer. So due to the form of our bone structure as females, you know, your hips are, are wider when it comes the bone here of your legs, right? And as it goes down into your knees, it doesn't go straight. On a man, on a man, male bone structure, their hip, their bones here from the hip, they go straight, the, the legs. But ours as female, they go in slightly, right? Like a V. So what this means is that as your bones go down, your knees will crash at some point, right? So there will be a lot more rubbing here, a lot more rubbing of your knees, a lot more rubbing of your thighs. So I teach openly like this due to the anatomy of our body and because once we bend a little bit, you create a little bit of space here in between the thighs. That is my way of teaching. So again, you can take the rest of the video and still do this if you prefer, right? Like your feet straight forward. So that will be your standing. The body weight, it's going to be towards your heels. So we're not leaning forward, right? I'm over exaggerating, but we're not leaning forward into the toes. We are back into the heels. Right, and then we're gonna bend our knees just enough. Again, there are some schools of Tahitian that will teach you to go way lower. I personally do not teach to go super low for a farapu because then you will wobble a lot more and you will lose that stability and movement. A farapu really, it's a small hip circle. Right, it's not a wide hip circle. If you try to make it too wide, you're going to bounce a lot and you're going to sacrifice speed. Meaning, if you go wide and you try to do it faster and you're bending a lot, this is how your up is going to look. Because anatomically, even if you're trying to hold it and your abs are strong, your body, as you widen that circle, needs to go through all the surfaces of your feet, through the side, to the front, to the other side, to the back. And you're only like this little stick in the middle while your hips circle all around. So that will naturally create that instability of moving your whole body like this. So that's why Farapu needs to remain as a small circle, but it still needs to be a circle. Because a lot of people end up shaking it or end up uh, doing, uh, mostly focusing on the upper back muscles, like lifting the butt. And they don't bring their body forward to engage their core. And those are big mistakes. That's when you end up, again, kind of like twerking or moving a lot, bouncing a lot, you lose control. So it needs to engage the core okay it needs to come forward 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 so with that said let's get into it you're going to be using front of your core you're going to be using side of your core and you're going to be using back of your core right the the rope muscles here so you have your foundation of your feet your knees are slightly bent now some tips, do not overly lift your ribcage, do not. Don't try to go like this. Overarching your spine 
will arch your spine so much that again, once you're trying to go fast, it's going to create that upper motion of jerking, right? If you lift your ribs too much. So yes, you want to have a straight back, but not overly lifted, especially if you're somebody super flexible in your back. You don't want to do this, right? It's just a normal stand up straight thing. Like you feel your rib cage lifting and engaging. You're not drooping the shoulders, but you're not purposely lifting or pushing the chest forward, okay? It needs to be straight but neutral. I hope that makes sense. So, not like this, not like this, but lifted, right? Like elongated to the top. Shoulders are going to be relaxed. Now, you can use your hands straight out here. This is a typical thing for Farapu. Now they have changed it a lot, right? But you can completely keep them like this for balance. This will keep your back straighter. But you can use them down here. You can use them in front. In the front, you can bring them up here. Like whatever you want to do with your Farapu, um, even keeping them on the sides like this. But don't sacrifice your arm position for chest elongation okay meaning if you do this right now you naturally feel your upper back lifted because you lifted your arms right but if you bring your arms down notice how you start feeling like your back muscles you need a lot of body awareness okay you're gonna feel like your back muscles start collapsing down so therefore your chest might collapse so just be mindful of that. If your arms are down, you still want to keep your chest lifted, not overly arch, but lifted and engaged. Now, something that helps a lot is going to tighten your core just a little bit, just a little bit. So instead of leaving your core just, just like that unengaged, you're going to just tuck it tuck it in it's a very subtle movement just tuck it in a little bit and tighten it a little bit that will give you more stability than having your whole muscle kind of like just loose around okay so you want to tighten i'm going to over exaggerate so you see but you want to tighten a little bit right this is i'm tightening a lot right now like it feels uncomfortable so you don't want to do that but you also don't want to leave all the muscle like unengaged so gentle gentle tuck, gentle engagement, okay? So now what are we gonna do is to tuck in the tailbone forward. This is, now I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do the farapu, and I have to do all that tucking, that way you understand why we're doing this, because otherwise, if I just teach you how to do this, you're still not gonna know all the rest and you're still gonna be bouncing. So you tuck the tailbone forward. Remember, we're having our knees bent slightly. So your tailbone is neutral to begin with. I'm going to move here so you can see so the plant. So we're going to tuck the tailbone in forward and the rest of the body, just how I told you. Now here when it's tucked, you're going to feel that your body weight is on both feet. Now keeping that tuck, you're going to move it to the right side or to the left side. But for this video, I'm just going to say for the right side for now, right? So you keep the tuck and you shift your weight to the right side. We're not straightening the right leg, we're just shifting. They're still both bent. I'm gonna show you from the front, I'm tucking, shifting, but still tucked. Right? I'm gonna show you from the back, tuck forward, you keep it tucked, and you shift to the right, okay? Now, once you do that, you're on the right, most of your body weight is on the right foot. Don't lift the left from the floor. But most of your weight is here. You're tucked in. You're shifted to the right. Now, keeping your body weight on the right side in the same body position, you're going to lift up your tailbone on that right side, towards that right side. Lift up. And so you're engaging. I don't want you to purposely go like that. It's just the hip bone, okay? Just the hip bone. Don't arch your upper body. The upper body remains neutral, how I explained at the beginning. So you lift, and you're still on the right side. Again, I'm going to show from here, and I'm going to show from the back. 
that's it right you lift now that you lifted you're keeping that body lifted that hip bone you should feel you're right here working and you're gonna shift your weight to the left side but still with your hip lifted this leg is not completely stretching it's straightening more than the right side because we shifted the weight but not straightening they're always remaining bent and now just like that on that left side you're gonna tuck it in in that in that left side tuck it into the front tuck now you remain i'm gonna turn to the other side so that you can see but let's just stay here so for now so you have it tucked you're on that left foot you're engaging the front core of your muscles without compromising the upper body this requires practice and consistency you're not going to move the upper body only the low body right so we're doing isolation here now transfer the weight but keep it tucked lift the tailbone keeping it on the right side keep the tailbone lifted move to the left and front so it's like we're doing almost an afata right a square now you have to smooth out instead of doing it so boxy you know like front tuck lift lift tuck tuck lift lift instead of making it boxy you're going to soften the edges by moving softer right so here's where it comes if you're doing a very wide movement like this it is called a tumami or an ami but we want to keep it small small so we're not widening the hips it's almost in place here right like think of your hips they can move like this right like a cauldron <laughs> or they can move like this so this is what we want to do for farapu it's just in its axis right here in its axis right and you just smooth that out so coming closer so that you see and tuck in tailbone you keep your your upper body neutral now we move to the right and you lift your butt keeping it lifted we're not arching the upper body shift to the left good tuck hold the tuck your, your abs should be burning okay if they're not burning you're not doing it right <laughs> you should be engaging them so you're keeping them engaged tuck move to the right release that tuck we're lifting into the right side now into the left side it's showing you from the side as well here close closer so we're bending the knees tuck in shift your weight to the right lift the tailbone move to your left you're still lifting the tailbone but not moving upper body tuck in into the left side shift to the right again lift shift tuck shift lift shift tuck lift and now you smooth that out you smooth that out see you smooth that smooth those corners into a circle and if you notice my upper body is not arching and doing this right it's only the lower body lower body yeah look at my rib cage it's not moving so you just speed up faster and faster and faster as you go and of course you know your your body is going to bounce a little that's normally that's normal your bones are attached you have to bounce um some people have asked me if i don't have a butt can i do that if you have a hip bone you can't do it <laughs> if you have a hip bone and two legs even with one leg you could do it okay so it has nothing to do if you have a large butt or not it might look when you're looking you think that it's because they have you know a lot of a big butt but it's not really you can do it with a flat butt you um i also have questions if i'm older can i do it if i'm bigger can i do it anybody can do it you have muscles you have bones 
you can do it, okay? So that is basically how you do it. I gave you the tip of, you know, not overarching the back. Um, I'm going to give you another tip. You can use an oil like Monoy oil or um, some oil that is a little bit more, like, less thick. Like, you don't want to use, like, um, shea butter or things like that. Something that is, like, slicker. And you can put in between your thighs if you have thighs that crash into each other like mine. Because if not, that is going to also keep them rubbing and that's going to hold you from speed. Okay, so you're going to notice, um, you can try this in the shower. When you're showering and you're all wet, your, your thighs are wet, you try to do that farapu, you're going to notice how easier it is. To have that speed because this like um, just moves with a lot more ease right because it gets slippery so you want to add a little bit of oil just here in in your thighs and give it a try and notice how that feels for you right so we're engaging all these muscles and just going around the hips I'm gonna turn now to the back. We can practice here. We are gonna practice slow and then a little bit faster, okay? So just practice on the side. And we're gonna keep our palms to the sides or out. You can do right side or left side. For this video, I did towards the right first, um, but you can do to the left side. Whichever side is easier for you. Um, every good dancer has both sides, develop and practice, but um, you know, do, do the side that comes easier to you. All right, so we're going to start slow, and right here, bend down, starting, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Now, that, make sure that your focus is on tucking that tailbone in. Your abs should feel the work not your back. You're still lifting your tailbone, but don't make the focus of the back because remember, you're going to be bouncing a lot. So let me turn this way and we are going to do eight to the back as well. You can keep your palms here or on the sides. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to come a little bit closer as well. Let's practice again. Palms out. You know your feet position. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Turn into the back. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Now I'm going to speed up. And because we're speeding up, I'm going to do 16 or two counts of eight, right? Five, six, if you cannot do it as fast, that's okay. You go at your own pace. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Turn back. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, it's hard to move and count. <laughs> All right, let's do it a little bit closer here. Palms down, straight back position. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Turn to, to the back. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. All right. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, I have classes on Patreon. I also teach belly dance on this channel, as well as in Patreon. And I also teach Hawaiian dance. So I'll see you guys on the next video. If you have any questions or requests, please let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.